This episode of the Stockberry Dark is brought to you by Shop Shogun. Shop Shogun is your one-stop shop for the latest and greatest in punk, hardcore, and heavy metal merchandise. Officially licensed web stores from bands such as 100 Demons, Integrity, Disembodied, Madball, Agnostic Front, and many more. The Stockberry Dark, along with Shop Shogun, are offering a special code to discount your next order when you use it on their website. Use the promo code SDPODCAST to save 10% from your next order from Shop Shogun. Again, the code is SDPODCAST. Their website is shopshogun.com. Also, check out their page, Shop Shogun, on Facebook and at Shop Shogun Merch on Instagram. Hello and welcome to the Stockberry Dark. My name is Peter Morsey. My name is Klaus and I'm sitting in Stockholm, Sweden. Yeah, but it's been a it's been a long summer, Klaus. We're finally back. We took a little vacation um, from the show. You know, yeah. we we both are family men. We've had our, our our kids all summer. A lot of work going on. Um, so we took an unexpected five weeks from recording, I think. But we're back in the groove again. We did. Today, um, we got to we yeah. got to hang out this summer. Yeah, we did. We were able to meet up in uh, Philadelphia for this is hardcore. Yep. Um, thank, thanks, Joe Hardcore, for uh, setting it up and bringing Klaus and I together because we had a we had a great weekend together. You know, it was the first time we've seen each other since Boston of last year, or maybe that was two years ago. I don't I don't even remember, but uh, it was very cool. It was a nice little trip to a very hot city in the middle yep. of the summer, but we big, made it. Big shout out to. Joe Hardcore. No shout out yep. to uh, the humidity in Philadelphia. <laughs> None whatsoever. But anyways, we're happy to be back, man, after this after this break. Uh, today we have legendary hardcore journeyman Rich Thurston. <laughs> What's up, Rich? How you doing? What's happening, my guy? Psyched to have you on the show. We've been talking about it for a while since we started. And, uh, you know, I've, I've met Rich back in Connecticut. I think it was probably around the mid to late 90s. When you, Was it late 90s when you were playing in Blood Has Been Shed? Yeah, it was uh, ninety, just the tail end of ninety eight when I moved out there. Yeah, but I remember meeting you because I remember you came up to me. And we were just talking. And you, and the first one of the first things you did was pull up your sleeve and show me your big forced reality tattoo. And then, oh and then, we, <laughs> then we and then we bonded right from there. I was like, "This is my man." The forced it's reality, like, like my... the forced reality dude. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yep. The who was Jocko Willing? You know, who was a pretty major. Uh, major name right now doing a lot of big things um that was my that was my first tattoo yep that's very cool very cool yeah so rich has been everywhere lived all over played in a ton of bands you know blood has been shed die cast um one nation under when you you were in terror when it first started i remember getting the demo right out of your hands the cdr demo from you up at the lng in new london um your current band is treason right yes sir Uh, I, I don't think I've heard Treason yet, but we played together. Um, oh, so I guess we're not as good as friends as I thought we were. You know, sometimes <laughs> sometimes you got to hang out in the parking lot. <laughs> I actually missed you guys when we played that show in Chicago last year. Um, I think we were out getting dinner or something. And uh, you guys so, had a heck of a time. You guys had a heck of a time getting there, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah, it was brutal. <laughs> There's a lot of delays, but it's funny because you know the distance between us. I swear I see you a few times a year. You know, no matter what, we're always in the same place or the same fest, and we always get to catch up and hang out, and that's a that's a great thing. Um, one, of the, one of these times, I'm going to come to your house for Thanksgiving dinner. I, you're always, always welcome. The door's always open. Last year we had Twitching Tongues over, you know, for uh, Thanksgiving. You know, because Sean that plays in Twitching Tongues is one of my best friends in the world. And, right. Uh, you know, they had two days off around Thanksgiving. I was like. 
he always comes over for Thanksgiving. He's like, well, this year I'm with the guys. I was like, bring them, you know, it's, it's every year it's my family, but we bring in everybody. So there's always an extra 10 or 15 people from my world. that always come and comes and eats with our family. So you're always, well, I mean, you, you know, you live in a castle, so <laughs> <laughs> you have plenty of room for everyone. Yeah. We're, we're ready to accommodate, you know, always our holidays are big and we, we, we love having everyone there. Rich, you live, but, in, uh, you, you live in Florida now. No, I'm in uh, I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio now. Okay. The scenic, beautiful Cincinnati, Ohio. A lot of good, got a lot of good folks in Ohio, though. We got a lot of good friends there, man. Oh, you know, for sure, for sure. You know, for a very like quiet state, there's a lot of things always going on there. And uh, <laughs> as an understatement, but I know where you're getting at. Yep. Well, anyways. Like I said, we're really happy to have you here. I know from the get-go you were saying, hey, man, I got some stories to tell. And uh, I've been, you know, excited to get you on here. And uh, when I hit you up last week, you know, when you said yes, it was like game on, man. Psyched to have Rich Thurston on the show. Um, so I was thinking maybe we can just start getting right into uh, maybe uh, a little bit of an order of of these kind of darker paranormal experiences that you had growing up. Okay. Um, it's actually, it, it wasn't even something of while I was growing up, it happened much later in life for me. Um, we uh, were, we were the band I was in at the time culture. We were all moving up to Gainesville, Florida from South Florida. We're, mm-hmm. We were just making it, the band was just making a move. So friends of mine had moved up there first and they were all staying in the same house. We couldn't quite move in yet. So I had about three or four weeks before I could move up there. Um, and I would talk to him, my friend, Anthony, I would talk to him pretty much every night. And, um, he started telling me about like weird stuff that would go on in the house, like stuff would get knocked over or he'd hear, he'd hear noises that didn't make, they wouldn't make any sense. You know, um, this was the house that you guys were renting. Yeah. Yeah. They were renting this, this one house and we were, our house wasn't ready yet. So we were waiting to go up. Well, they were they had already moved up there and got settled in and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. basically, sitting and watching stuff get knocked over. Yeah, he would. He would. I'd be on the phone with him, and he'd say, "Oh, this just fell off my my dresser, or you know, the faucet just turned on for no reason. Things of that, like you know, things like that." Yeah. Um, and me being very skeptical at the time, I I just I kind of told him he was full of shit and stuff, and. Didn't really believe him, and I thought he was just trying to mess with me, or you know, just having fun or whatever. So the story started to to escalate a little bit. Um, one of his roommates that was there, Mark, said that one time he was in his room and um, was listening to music and stuff, and he was laying in bed, and apparently his covers were pulled down tight across his body, and he couldn't move. And he, and he said it was probably for like 30 or 40 seconds he couldn't move. Oh. And, um, you know, and, and, and then all of a sudden it was, it was fine. Just for like 30, 40 seconds, he was like, I could not move. I couldn't do anything. And like the room got real quiet. He said even though his music was playing, the room got real quiet. And he was like, it was pulled down like, uh, from both sides. Like it was almost like two people. Mm-hmm. Like, one pers- like one person had one side, somebody else had the other side. They were holding him down and it was like his full body, not just his chest or like his arms, like all the way down the bed to his legs. Like he couldn't move anything. So you heard this and you were, I mean, you were telling us, telling me earlier pre um, recording that you were, you know, a skeptic. Um, I, I mean, I, yeah, I was definitely hear these, these types of stories. Yeah. I mean, I was definitely, I still like skeptical of it, but like, I don't know. It just didn't seem to make any sense. Why? why anybody would really make that up, especially like us being all friends and stuff at the time. It didn't really seem like some people would make up. So I thought I was more anxious. I was definitely anxious to get up there and see if this was like real stuff that was going on mm-hmm. or if, or if all of a sudden, once I get there, it stops type of right. situation. You know, yeah, you got it. I mean, of course you got to see it to believe it. Right. That's yeah. You know, you have to experience something. Uh, it may not, it doesn't always have to be as intense as somebody else's, but you still have to experience something for yourself before you can really be like, yo, that's, that's real. What kind of house was it? It was just a, like a ranch style house. It was an older house. Um, 
from I, I wanted we did a little research in the house, which I'll get into a little later. But I think it was like in it was built in the forties, I believe. Um, the whole neighborhood had a bunch, just a lot of old house, old ranch style houses. Right. Um, I was just going to ask that. What kind of neighborhood was it? Yeah, it was a normal neighborhood, man. Like it wasn't anything that you would think was like spooky or or anything like that. I mean, there were tons of houses. There was kids, families. You know, it was like it wasn't anything that was like uh, awesome. out of the ordinary than any other any other you know American neighborhood type of situation. Right. So I moved up there, and uh, I moved up there a week early, and I because I wanted to stay at their house. Because my house is the people that were living there were moving out. We were going to move in. So I had about a week layover between. I'm like, well, I'm just going to leave now. So I go up there. And, um, you know, the first night that everyone's hanging out, and it's all loud and stuff in the house. And, you know, you don't really think anything of it. But then everybody starts getting ready to go to bed. And, um, you know, we, we had talked about it a little bit while I was there. Um before you know, before everyone went to sleep, you know, I talked about some of the stuff that's happened in the house, and you know what I quote unquote what I should expect, you know that kind of thing. And again, and still, this, I'm not. And this was your first night, right? That was my first night there. Yeah. yeah. And again, I'm and I'm still not sold on this whole story. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I don't, you know, so I don't really know what's going to happen. So I'm laying there on the couch. Everyone's in their rooms, um, watching David Letterman. I remember it. I remember it distinctly, and um, you know how sometimes when you fall asleep, or like right before you fall asleep, um, you wake up suddenly, and you're not really sure why. You feel like nervous, and you get a little scared. You're not really sure why. You just woke up real quick. Yep. Um, be it a, be it a noise, or be it just just a weird twitch or something that wakes you up. Um, I feel like I had just just started to doze off, and I felt like this full hand with fingers like run down my face uh-huh. that's what it felt like to me so i mean i woke up and i was like holy shit what was that and i again i was like okay now my mind's playing tricks on me right because i'm expecting something to happen so my mind's going and it, that felt like that but it probably wasn't so i could explain that one away in my brain you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying so I'm like, all right, well, you know, let me try and go back to sleep again. So I go back to, you know, I start to fall back to sleep and all the lights were off in the house. And, um, I woke up just like as, as people do sometimes in the middle of the night and the, the kitchen light was on where I'm, where I'm sleeping. It's like, you can see directly into the kitchen where I'm sleeping. It's all, it's its own little separate room. It has a doorway, but you could definitely see clearly. Um, so I get up to go turn the light off. I'm about halfway to the bathroom, uh, excuse me, to the kitchen and the faucet turns on. So I think someone's in there. Yeah. You know, I come around the corner. There's nobody in the kitchen. The faucet is definitely on. Mm-hmm. Jeez. So at this point, I'm like, all right. All right, maybe these stories are having some <laughs> bit of truth to them here. Yeah, maybe, maybe this is, it's a little bit real. <laughs> I mean, this is straight on your first night too. You know, after first night. these things. So first, I mean, right, it, right. There was there was no no pause or hesitation with any of it. You just jumped right in and started. Right, like zero hesitation. Um, it just it was immediate. You know what I'm saying? So, so I walk over and turn the faucet off. Mind you, I'm about to shit my pants you know what i'm saying so i turn i mean i'm where scared were, to death you know where were, where were all the other guys in their own oh, they're, they're, they're in their rooms. Their rooms. yeah they're in their separate rooms doors were shut um do you, do you recall what time of night it was um well letterman was on when i first first fell asleep so i'm going to say it was about midnight mm-hmm. it was right around that time it was, the show had already been on and i was watching it the time i got up with the kitchen incident i'm not exactly sure this was definitely the time before cell phones, so we had no idea what was going on. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. like there was no clocks or anything in, in the living room, so I couldn't really tell what was happening as far as time was. The TV was off, which I must have turned off, although I don't remember turning it off. Yeah, but you know, so that freak, yeah, you know, that that definitely got me thinking. I'm like, all right, some weird shit's popping off in this house. So I turned Did the you... faucet off. Go ahead, what? Mm-hmm. No, go ahead. Sorry. Okay, no, uh, yeah, I, I turned the faucet off. And I turned the light off. 
walked back in the living room, and I sort of just sat up on the couch for a while, like just waiting for something else to happen, you know? Um, and, it, it, you know, it got real quiet, and nothing else seemed to be happening, so I, I sort of I dozed off sitting up on the couch. Um, I would say, I don't know how long it was later. Again, it was, st- it was still dark out. It wasn't like, you know, dawn yet or anything. Mm-hmm. So I don't know exactly what time it was, but I woke up to what sounded like a damn football game going on up in the attic. Jeez. It sounded like people, or like a basketball game, dudes running up and down court. It sounded like there, there was a hundred people up there, mm-hmm. like just walking around, kind of thumping around. Anthony, who his room was right next to the couch that I was staying on, he came out of the room, and he because he heard it, and he came out and saw me. He's like, you know, do you believe me now? And I'm like, I'm like, holy shit, get me out of this house! <laughs> <laughs> I was scared to death. I'm like, what? What is this? What is happening right now? Like, you know, it's like a movie. You know, what I'm saying yeah. like you see stuff in the movie, and you think, oh, that's that's crazy, but it's not real because it's in a movie. No, that shit's real. It really happened. Like, I mean, I, again, I was a giant skeptic. So I needed to really be, you know, I needed proof. I wasn't just taking somebody's word for it. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I immediately was like, yo, you guys didn't lie about a single thing. That shit's crazy. So I ended up sleeping in Anthony's room with him as if he was going to save me from the ghost or something. I don't <laughs> right. Know. I don't know what I was thinking. I guess strength in numbers i guess i don't know yeah of course you know you, you just start thinking i want to be around someone i, want, I don't want to be out here by myself so well, was the whole band staying in the one house was it all- um no it was me one other guy in the band and the people who lived there it was anthony and another girl which i forget her name at this at this time yeah. um but there was just a couple of us there a couple of us were staying somewhere else so it, it again we were all going to rendezvous in about a week mm-hmm. so Next morning, wake up. We immediately start talking to everybody else in the in the house about it. They're like, you know, they they didn't hear that that last night, but they've heard that before, et cetera, et cetera. So, a couple of days go by, nothing else happens. Right, I stay there for a couple more nights. Nothing else, nothing else comes of it. Um, so I, it's time to move into my new place. So. We all move, me and a couple other guys, we move into our own, our own spot. Um, after about a week of that, Anthony comes by the house and he says, yo, last night, some really crazy stuff happened. And I'm like, well, what happened? And he told me that he was in his room and he looked out the window and he thought he saw someone like looking in his window and he turned his light off real quick so he could see out. And he said it was a full figured like dark, like a dark mass, but it had features. Oh man! Like it was, like yeah, like it was, like you could see a face, you could see hands, you could see it, but it wasn't like it wasn't fully formed. But you could it had features where you knew right. it was like that's a person <clears throat> of some sort standing there. So he grabs a fucking samurai sword that he has on his counter, <laughs> and he runs out. He runs outside. He just thinks, you know, your first instinct is like, yo, why is there someone standing outside my window? Yeah, someone's creeping in the yard and looking at the windows. I'm going to go, I'm going to cut this guy's head off. Like, who is this guy? He runs out there. Of course, there's nobody there. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's like, there's no indentions on the, like we had, uh, the side of the house that he had on was uh, just grass, like dirt. There was no Mm -hmm. grass and there was no, like, there was no footprints or anything. Yeah. So he told us that he's like. So me and Anthony went to um, the library because we wanted to get a little more, a little more information about the house itself, just to, just to see if there was any, if this is something that's been going on for years. Is this, you know, what happened in that house? What's, you know, things of that nature, things you would do in a movie. You mm-hmm. want to go find out, a, you well, know? Well, like, what we can add here for the younger listeners is that the internet wasn't around yet, right? Right, of course, like of course, that. yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, we're talking 90, 96. You know, we didn't, you know, we didn't have, we had to go to the library. We had to go to places of public records and stuff. You had to put real footwork into it. Yeah, you really did. You, you had, to, you were still touring with an atlas and, yeah. and written written directions. You know, so, so the people. Before we go any further, the people that were in the house, did everyone freshly move into this home, or were the other people occupants for a while before this? How, no, how every, every, 
everyone freshly moved in. They were in there for okay. about six months before us. Okay. Anyway, so they were How, dealing with it was they were dealing with this for for six months previous though. Did it start, yeah. did, did it the, start the, for them immediately when they first moved in? Um, not immediately, but for a solid probably four months. Right. You know, like it, it was four months before I got up there, I was hearing stories. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think it was immediate, although it could have been immediate and they just sort of, you know, uh, explained it away in their heads like I did, you right. know, so that could have been, it could have been happening since the moment they walked in the house, but, but it wasn't like, it wasn't drastic enough to warrant believing that you had something going on, you know? Right. Yep. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, so we go and do a little research on this place. Like I said, the house was built in the forties. Um, we we dug as deep as we could, you know. You can, you can you could dig on the house. Apparently, there was um, a death on the property of a child. Um, he was hit by a car out in front of the house, but apparently the family lived in that house. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, we found out that the house was a safe haven for slaves trying to really? get, trying to get North. Really? So pre- previously to that house being built, the property. Yes. Had another yeah. structure, I assume. Yeah. Wow. And, and from what they said is they used to hide them in the attic. Wow. So immediately I'm like, yo, that's what those, that's the noises we heard upstairs. Mm-hmm. Like immediately I was like, okay, this is what, this is what's happening. So, Another, I'm also very skeptical, skeptical of people who call themselves like mediums and they can talk to the dead and yeah, we all, all that stuff. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of it's just straight malarkey. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, but, and narcissism. Oh, for sure. Oh, absolutely. Like, look what I can do. Pay attention to me. I'm great. I can do this, but you're really not talking to anybody. So we had this a mutual friend who was extremely goth. <laughs> which, which I think we can all appreciate, <laughs> but, <Of course. laughs> but, um, you know, of course she was a medium and of course she did this and did that. We're like, all right, let's bring this, this chick in and see what she, what she's talking about. So we didn't tell her anything other than what had been going on in the house. We didn't tell her about any of the information that we found out as yeah. far as so you, so you, the slaves. You, you, you talked with her after going to, after going to the library. No, we didn't. We told her about the the events that have taken place, but not the information that we found out at the library. Yeah, okay. Because we, cause we wanted to see if she was going to actually talk to someone, if we were going to get information from her that matched what we found out. Because then, I, then I might believe her a little bit. Yeah, you know. So, and this was like, hey, can you come over? It's like, yeah. So it wasn't like it wasn't like, oh, I'll be there in a week, and she can go do a research on her own. You know what I'm saying? It was like, oh yeah, I'll be over. I'm coming over. So she came, so she came over and, you know, she says, she's like, as soon as she walked in the house, you know, it was very heavy. It was very like ominous feeling in the house. Um, she sat down in the middle of the living room and where I, where I slept when I first got there. And she said that we were sitting on the couch where I, where I slept. And she said that the wall behind us where the couch was pushed up against was like, red like hot red like it was almost on fire that's what she was seeing so she was sensing some serious heat and warmth coming from there yeah and and also the other side of that wall is where mark was held down by his covers so it's like there's a correlation there between right that you know where i was sleeping where mark's room was and that wall that separated us Mm -hmm. um so so she's telling us you know, about you know, what she's seeing and she started talking about previous owners of the house. She said that she's like, Oh, uh, uh, apparently, uh, you know, I'm seeing a little boy and we're like, you got, you gotta be fucking kidding me. <laughs> you know, like you got like this, you gotta be kidding me right now. Cause it was a little, it was a child, a boy that got hit by a car. Going and back to that boy, what, what, when did that take place? It was, uh, it was in the sixties. Uh-huh. If, if I remember, this is all, you know, we're talking 20, 
five years ago, close to the story, but like it was, it was in the sixties. So it wasn't that far removed from history. Right. You know, it was, but like, it was long enough to not like, you know, we had to do a little digging to find out what was going on there. Right. So, um, but like she was having, apparently she was having a conversation with this child and the child was saying that he was hit by a car out in the front they brought him they brought him back into the house he actually died in the house he didn't die in the street he died in the house and that's why he's still there so we're like yo like how did how did you feel hearing that you know after you know you previously went found out the news about you know the child and the history of it then to have someone come there soon after and start telling you about it you know well, do you think right. she had, was she local to this home? Did she know anything about it previously? She didn't know, she didn't know anything about it. We, we all moved to Gainesville. Uh, Gainesville wasn't someplace you're just from, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you, everyone would move there to go, you know, that's where university of Florida is like, or like you just, it's just kind of like where all old, old hardcore guys go to die. It's like right. Gainesville, Florida, you know? So like everyone was like a transport there. So it's not like there would be some, folklore that she would know or you know anything like that it was just a person we knew and she came over and knew exactly what we had found out and we didn't tell anybody you know like nobody nobody was going to tell her anything she's just the first time experiencing it and this is the information she's giving us mm -hmm. so so at that point i was like okay listen and then i told her about that story i didn't tell her anything about the you know the, the slaves or anything on that property. I, I, I just told him, like, we, we found out we, you know, this is what you just said is a hundred percent true. We just didn't know that the, the child actually died in the house. Right. What was her reaction to her? You telling her you knew about that. Was it any surprise or did she was like, yeah, I knew this. No, I think she was just like, well, yeah, I'm, that's why I'm here. Like yeah. more like, more like it's cool. She was like, she was, she was happy. We did our own research. Mm -hmm. because then it because then it gave her some le legitimacy as well yeah totally you know and, and like so here i am skeptical of ghosts i got ghosts touching me water getting turned on slaves running around upstairs i got this medium who i don't believe in telling me a story that there's no way she could have known so i'm getting hit with a lot of shit at one time mm -hmm. you know like that's a lot that's a lot of stuff to to you know to to grasp and uh so we you know we we end that she leaves and she's like you know, she didn't really, she didn't really feel any, she couldn't give us any more specifics about the wall being as hot as it was. There was no like evil talking to her or trying to hurt her or anything of that nature, but it was definitely there. So she told us to definitely pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. You know, like, we're like, okay, you know, like, I mean, I didn't live there anymore. I was like, thank God I'm getting the hell out of here. But, um, so like another couple of weeks go by. And there's nothing to talk about. Nothing's happening. Um, um, so Anthony, I'm oh, sorry, Mark, whose room was a, a, adjacent to that wall that was very hot. Um, apparently one night he was also looking out his window, front window, and said that he saw something very similar to what Anthony saw out of his window. Mm -hmm. But it was... The guy was like on fire almost. Jeez. Like it was, he was like red, like, and it was way more of an angry situation than what it was with Anthony. Mm -hmm. Anthony's almost looked like, like he, the way Anthony described it was like, it was, it was like a, someone was like, Oh, Hey, what are you doing? You're new here. Like something like that. Like more, more like just looking. Whereas mm -hmm. this guy was like, what the fuck are you doing here? Like angry about them being there. Um, and of course, Mark freaked out and ran out and, and tried to get it. You know, like, and of course it was gone, you know, whatever, whatever it was, was gone. So, and, and again, it had been, it had been a couple of weeks since anything had happened, but that to me, that was like a really big ramping up from what had been previously happening. Oh yeah. A full you know, apparition, so, full apparition. Right, right. You know, so you're thinking, okay, this is, it's starting to ramp up again, but it's not just noises. It's not just, you know it's now you're seeing shit and this guy looks really pissed. So, so it changes the whole dynamic of, of everything. So somebody in their infinite wisdom decided to 
get a Ouija board, which oh, is also here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah, which is also which is also something that I truly do not believe in either. Mm-hmm. I was like, if Mattel can make these and sell them at Toys R Us, it's not real, you know, in my head. So apparently, it's, um, Gordon, which was the bass player for my band at the time, had this super old Ouija board that his dad was given by his dad, and so on and so forth. It was supposed to be made from wood of a house that burned down mysteriously, you know, who knows what the real story is, but that's the story we all got. Mm-hmm. So we're like, all right, well, let's bring it. Let's bring it to Anthony, Anthony's house. Oh man. Yeah, I know. I know. Listen, in hindsight, it was a terrible idea, <laughs> but at the time you're like, hell yeah, let's get, let's, you know, let's get this party started. So Anthony, we want one of the people who lived there to do it, not people who were just there at the house. So Anthony and Mark were had their you know hands on the Ouija board, and they're you know, is anybody here? But you know, the typical thing you would see in any sci-fi or horror movie ever, you know, mm-hmm. we're trying um, to make contact. How many, yeah, how, just trying to make. How many people were in the room? There was, let's see, there was probably five of us at this time. Yeah. Um. The three people that lived there, and me and another buddy were there. Um, so th- they're sitting there for what seems like an hour, and nothing's happening. So now I'm like, well, wait a minute. If all this other stuff's happening, why isn't this happening? This is silly. Um, it doesn't make any sense what's happening here. So we're about to give up, for real. We're about. To, I, I was about to say, yo, you guys are ridiculous. Let's put this thing away. And literally, right before I said that, the kitchen light turned on, and the thing started to move. All right? Now, my heart skipped a beat when it started to move, of course. I was like, holy shit. Is this, is this real? So, of course, me being the skeptic that I was for so, so many years, for as long as I can remember, I was like, yo, you guys are moving that thing. You know, and they were, you know, like, they're like, I swear to God, we're not we're like, we're barely touching this thing right now. We're just keeping a little bit of a connection between us and the, I'm like, there's no way. So they start, they start asking you questions. They're like, who is this? You know, like who's here with us? And it spelt out child, not a name. It was just child. Mm-hmm. Um, and we we're like, Oh, you gotta be, you gotta be fucking kidding me right now. Like you have to be kidding me. So it starts, it starts moving around. We're like, did you die in this house? It went to yes. Um, and there were some other questions that were asked, like just basic, you know, simple questions to get as many answers as we could. And the last question, I'll never, I'll never forget it. The last question was, is there anybody else here with you? And it went to yes. And we're like, what, who are they? And really very, very fast. It spelt out demon. <laughs> like really quick, like bam, 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 bam. Like too precise of movements for, for them to have coordinated that themselves to move mm-hmm. it down. You know what I'm saying? Like it was like D E M O. It was like very quick. Did all the hands come right off the board right there? And, yeah, everyone's like, yo, like everyone shit themselves, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, but like, even Anthony's like, don't take your hands off the board without saying we're done. Like, don't, you know, he, he had also done some research on it. And this is one of the things he learned, you know? And so they, they said, we're, we're done talking. And then they took their hands off. And when Sue took their hands off, we were all like, holy shit. So the demon thing was like, was that who was outside Mark's window? Looking in, is that, is that why the wall is hot? Did something happen in one of these rooms that, you know, we, we didn't know what to think. So we decided that they were going to have the house blessed, not necessarily by like a priest. I forget who they had do it. They had the, the medium friend had someone. Mm-hmm. So they came in and did like a blessing on the house. Like if, you know, blah, blah, blah. I, I wasn't there for it. I was like, no, nah, I'm good. I'll, I'll set this one out. Um, and, I, I, and nothing else had nothing else ever happened in the house after that. Like nothing else, no, nothing else occurred. They didn't hear anything. No, no, the water didn't get turned on. The, there was no noises. There was no anything, uh-huh. you know, and like 
that was almost eerier than having this shit happen. Mm-hmm. Just complete it, absence. Yeah, because now you're like, well, wait, where where'd you all go? Mm-hmm. You know, like, is it that easy to get rid of you? Just have somebody that random guy with some sage walking around the house? Like, is that all right. we gotta do? You know, and uh, so uh, yeah, so nothing else ever happened in that house. Um, so you, know, you kind of think it's over and done with. You know, you think, oh, all right, that was that was one hell of a you know almost half a year there. That's pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. So then you think, all right, well, I come home from work one day to my house, and these assholes have the Ouija board in my house. I'm like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> and they're like, well, we, they're like, well, I figured if it wasn't, you know, if there's nothing going on in our house anymore, maybe we should see if there's anything in your house. I'm oh, like, a... yeah, I go, I go, listen to me. Let's just say this Ouija board worked. Let's just, for all the skepticals in the room, let's just say it worked. You talk to dead people on this thing, and now you've brought it into my home. Like, what if there was nothing here, and now there is, because they're attached to your fucking Ouija board. Right. So. You know, and they're like, no, oh, it's it's fine. It's, I'm like, oh, my God. So, the, again, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to put my hands on it this time. Like, I, I'm going to put my hands on it. Anthony, you, I don't want you to do it. I want someone else to do it. And so it was me and my friend Steve. We put our hands on the on the Ouija board. And I started asking questions. Is there anybody here? You know, the typical, anybody here, et cetera. Um, nothing's happening. Um, again, I'm about to quit and give up. I'm like, cool, nothing's happening here. That's exactly what I what I wanted to happen. <laughs> Nothing, you know. Um right before we were done, we we're like, so I, I believe Steve is what I asked it, said before we before we stop, are you sure you don't want to talk to us? If there's anyone here, we just want to talk to you, you know, blah blah blah. This thing starts moving. And I'm like, Steve, if you're moving this thing, I'm gonna kill you. And he's like, I swear to God, I'm not moving this thing. So it's it's doing like the whole figure eight thing. And I'm like, sweet Jesus, is this really happening in my house now too? <laughs> I get I couldn't believe it. I was like, this, this is ridiculous. This is this is not this is not cool. So we start asking us questions. Uh, I, I asked questions. I'm like, I'm like, who are you? And it said, it spelt out, it spelt out angel, but not correctly. Right. It was with an I instead of an E. Um, so like, or like a, like a guardian angel or ain't like what kind of, like who, you know, and it went to yes. And it said, who, who, whose guardian angel are you? You know, who, who do you, who is the person you're here to protect? And I'm the one who asked the question and it spelled out you like me, like it was, like it was there for me. And I was like, yo, like my heart's going like a million miles an hour. Like it's, Mm -hmm. it's like, I I can, I'm, I feel like I'm going to pass out almost Mm -hmm. because it's like, it's, it's pretty overwhelming. Um, and I was like, uh, how long have you been with me? And it, and it's, um, it went, it said four, the number four, and then it spelled out ever. Um, and I, I it was like, I, I, I couldn't believe what was happening, you know? And I'm like, and I said out loud, I'm like, I'm going to take my hands off of this and someone else is going to put their hands on it. Will you still talk to us? And went, it went to Yes. So I took my hands off and Anthony put his hands on. Um, and again, it's still doing figure eight, still moving. Um, I said, if you've been with me forever, you would know, you would know intimate things about me. Right. And it went to yes. And I was like, okay. So I started with like something simple. I'm like, what was my, you know, what was my, what would I ask her first? Like, no, I, I said, what was my street address? Like, not, not the one I had now, but the one I in, down in Miami. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and it went to 10965. And that was my house number. Wow. Now, this is, this is wild. Yeah. Yeah. I, so, again, though, I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe Anthony might remember that. Mm-hmm. 
You know, he'd only been, he actually only been to my parents. That's my parents' house. We've actually only been to my parents' house a few times. So I was like, maybe he just remembered that for some reason. I'm like, so well, I'm going to start asking like real, real questions. And I said, um, okay, what was my sister's middle name? There's no way that these douchebags in this room are going to know that. You know what I'm saying? They don't, I think they met my sister once the whole, the whole time we were friends. And it's spelled out Lynn, L-Y-N, and her name is L-Y-N-N. That's her middle name. So at this point, I was like, okay, this is 100% real. Like, this is, this is a real situation that's happening right now. The room must have been quiet. Like, like there were a couple of gasps when the, when the answers were correct. Mm-hmm. But other than that, other than that, it was complete silence. Like you could hear the the breathing of all of us. Like, yo, this is this is in, insane. Like, um, and so again, I, after that, I'm like, I don't even know if I want to do this anymore. Like, this is too much. This is getting a little too much for me. Um, so they're they're still doing it. It's still going to figure eight, and then it and then it spelled out leave, <laughs> and we're like we're like, do you have to leave? And and then went to yes, and we said why, and just as fast as it did before, it spelled out demon. Wow. wow. And I was like, I was like, yo, get this thing out of my house, get it out of my house right now. I don't care what. I just and your fucking thing and grab it and get out of my house with it. And uh, that was that was the last time I've ever had any experience with anything paranormal or mm-hmm. anything like that. I never, I never got touched a Ouija board again. I never asked them if anything else happened in their house. I, I didn't want to know anything about it anymore. Right. That's a truly wild experience from, from beginning to end. That story, is, I think it was one of my favorites we've done on this show so far. It was, uh, it, it, it was really like, it was really, it, like, it changed me for a while. Mm-hmm. You know, as you get older and you, you kind of, th- things like that, you can kind of like put in the back burner and go on with it. But like, there was a, you know, there was about a year where that, that really shook me mm-hmm. to think that there really was like, you know, like to think that there was actually something with me since forever. Yeah. That's gotta be something weighing on your mind constantly when you were going through that. I would, right. I would, I don't think I'd be able to think about anything else, you know? Yeah. Like, wow. Like to, to openly admit like, oh yeah, I've been with you forever, but now I got to leave because there's a fucking demon in your living room. You know, it's like. You're just like this is insane. Like I, I got to get out of here. I, yeah. I, I, I just left the house. I didn't like go back you, for it. You know? like, like you said, the other house, nothing past that time of that apparition, there was not in the use of the Ouija board. Nothing ever happened there again. How much longer do they stay in that home? Um, I'd say for I said we we all stayed up there for about a year. So they were there for a year and a half. We were we were in Gainesville for a year. So like. In my house, it had probably been eight months mm-hmm. since we had done that, and nothing ever happened. I'd really and love my, to find out like who lived there post right. that time, and, right. and and to see if any well, other experience. It was were all there. yeah. Like I didn't even want to do any research. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I was like, I don't, I don't want to know. Yeah, I don't want to know what happened here. I know it turned into a college house. We lived in what we call the, the college ghetto, where all the students would rent houses every year. Right. Um, was this uh, around the same time as like? Remember, there was the big murder, the serial killer in Gainesville. Killer it was murder. right. It was right after that. Mm-hmm. It was right after that when we, when we moved up there. Mm-hmm. Um. So I mean, <laughs> that's an old, old part of of Florida. You know, mm-hmm. the, Gainesville. I mean, the, the college has been there forever. It's it's just an old. It's been you know it's all of that's built on essentially swamp mm-hmm. you know i mean so who really knows what what went on there i mean it it's hard to tell what you know i'm sure there's plenty of atrocities that happened in there very, a lot of lawlessness and things of that nature mm-hmm. um so it's <clears throat> excuse me so it's uh yeah i just never wanted to know any more than that than what i was that what i've already found out mm-hmm. um do you know if your guy would, held held on to the Ouija board? Um, you know what? I I know he held on to it for some time, but um, I 
again, we never really talked about it again. And we've had reunion shows and stuff since then. We never really talked about it. Um, Pete, you, you, you would actually probably have a lot to talk to with him. He, um, he essentially makes Star Wars suits for a living. Oh, get out of here. He makes like, see, you remember that cover well, uh, with the C-3PO and what's her name, that comedian? That everyone, everyone, got, everyone got mad. Remember that cover that magazine? That oh, was I'm the. Not, I'm not sure if I recall that. Yeah, well, I forget. I, I'm, her name is escaping me right now, but she was a comedian and she did a cover with the C-3PO. He was the one inside the C-3PO outfit. Oh, no kidding. That's. Crazy. Yeah, he, and he, he works on. I mean, he, he's. I should hook you two up just so you guys could talk Star Wars because he. Yeah, yeah. I'd, like, I'd enjoy that. Yeah, yeah. But um, so it was his. And I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened to, you know, we're talking 96, 97. He may not, he may not even have it anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but I went back to Gainesville. We played a show in Tampa, which is not very far at all. And you kind of have to drive past Gainesville to get there. We, um, I went, it was me and, and my, my, my kid's mom and, and her, my kid, I wanted to show them where I lived in Gainesville. And, uh, we went by, where my house should have been, it was just an empty lot. Like the house had been torn down. Oh, it's gone. Yeah, the house is gone. And then we drove down to where Anthony's house was, which was probably three miles away. It was still there, um, but it looked like overgrown and stuff, almost like no one was even staying there. Mm-hmm. Or, it could have just, or it could have just been college kids who didn't give a shit about their right. house. You know what I'm so I, I didn't really get that deep into it, but. When I pulled up to Anthony's house, I felt I just felt weird again. Like just I felt weird. So I was like, Yeah, there it is. All right, let's go. And we just kinda went off went took yes. off, you know. Something you don't want to touch on again. Yeah, I don't want to like open any doors to anybody to latch on to me and drive right. back to Ohio. You yeah, know? totally totally understandable. <laughs> wow. Yeah, man, it was it was a crazy, crazy few months there. Just more so the the feeling afterwards, you know, like the very nervous, very like your mind let you know, your mind takes you in a million million directions when you experience something like that mm-hmm. like the, like the minor fritz song it follows yeah yeah it's just it i mean and since then i've had nothing ever happen like i've, I've had not another feeling like that or, or anything like that and it's um yeah uh I, the only thing i guess I don't chalk. I don't necessarily chalk it up to that. Is um, my kid's mom says that sometimes she can s- smell like cigarette smoke, mm-hmm. and her mom her mom used to smoke heavily, and she died of cancer probably uh, five years ago. And the room that she smells it in is the room that she stayed in, basically while she was dying. Right. She says, and there's no real reason why she should smell that anymore in that room. Mm-hmm. You know, so things like that, you're like, well, I mean, I believe you because of the, of the things that I went through. I believe that she's because I, I don't smell it. She does. Mm-hmm. So like things like that, like I, I don't brush it off. You know, I say, no, you you probably are. You probably yeah, do every, smell that. You everyone's know? got their own experiences and ways that, uh, well, you know, things are attached to them, whether it's something that's a memory that they can, you know, attribute to that that smell or if it's actually, you know some sort of contact, you know, but everyone's different, right. obviously. Well, the, str- the strength and scent is also much more stronger than we think it is mm-hmm. when it comes to yeah. mem- memories, etc. It's crazy strong. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, like I said, nothing's ever happened to me again since then, and my kids never, she's never said anything, you know, about anything, and she's 10 now, so she hasn't really said anything. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, 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 it, maybe it was just something with that maybe it's something with Gainesville itself that was uh, it just right. br- brought that out it, yeah. for whatever reason you know I, I don't know but yeah well I, I would consider yourself lucky you know that you right. to deal with it since then unless it was something you were willing to pursue even longer but from the sound of it it didn't you know sound like the friendliest of uh, you know encounters yeah I mean like uh, you, you, you automatically go to worst case scenarios you know like yeah of course I mean, this unfolded really almost like, like we were saying, like a movie, you know, just from the yeah. beginning to the end. It's a, 
Yeah, that's a great, great story, man. Really appreciate you coming on and, and sharing it with everyone. I think people are really going to love this. Yeah, I mean, it's the first time I've really talked about it since, uh, you know, real recently after it originally happened. We didn't, mm-hmm. we just never really, we, like, none of us really talked about it again mm-hmm. after that. And, you know, it seems to be the case with, like, with things like this, where it's just like a accepted and a lot of people really don't want to revisit it. You know, and it's like something you, you keep to yourself after a while because it's, there's a lot of, I'm sure, negative feelings that came along with it that you don't want to get back into again. Right. And then you start, you know, then I start thinking about things like uh, I was, I was adopted and I start thinking about like, what about like my birth parents? Like, what are they all about? Do mm-hmm. they have any kind of, do they have any experiences like this? And right. just being, just being an actual bloodline connected to me, do they mm-hmm. have, so it's like, it just, it opens up a whole slew of questions. Right. You know, totally understand that. So getting past all this, I mean, that's a, that's, that's, that's a major, major experience, but you know, outside of the story, what else have you been up to? In life since then, I know you've just been played in a handful of some of the you know top bands in our scene, and uh, what's been going on with your, uh, I guess, with your musical career since then. Well, you know, I mean, I, I've had the opportunity to play in some pretty awesome bands, and um, like I remember playing in Terror, thinking I had reached the pinnacle of all things great. You know, <laughs> like it was just the greatest, one of the greatest experiences ever. Yeah. Um, it kind of set like a blueprint for me for bands after that in the sense of like just the hustle that those guys would do. Mm-hmm. Like, like they would go play in front of 20 kids for three weeks and not even care. And now, I mean, now look at them, you know, yeah. like it's just, it just shows that like hard work and stuff. Oh yeah. The so definition I, of persistence, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I took that. I, I learned a lot from that experience with them and yeah, man, you know, I'm 45 years old now and it's just kind of, I can't go play for three weeks to 20 people anymore, you yeah. know? So, so I, you know, I, I start these bands and I, I always say to myself, you know, like, all right, well, this band's just going to be something you're going to do for fun and not really worry about doing anything with it. And then someone I know owns a record label and they're like, Oh, we'll put it out. And I'm like, Oh, here we go. Yeah. Here we go again. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. <laughs> you never <laughs> fully get away from it. And I understand that. Too. No. So it's, it's just, it, it's, it's still a great pleasure to be 45 years old and be able to start a new band a year ago and mm-hmm. put a record out and be able to go play shows places still. It's just makes you, it makes me feel good that, that, uh, I'm still able still have those kind of opportunities. Mm-hmm. Well, you've been a great guest, Rich. I'm really happy that we were able to you know, get this story out today. It's like I said, man, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's really, yeah. I'm, really st- good. I'm stoked. I'm stoked. It finally happened. You raised the hair on my arms like on three different instances through the, <laughs> the, the course of the last hour. Hair on your arms. Imagine how I felt when oh, that's man. Off. I know. I know. The, thing uh, spelled out, the thing spelled out demon like it was nobody's business. I'm like, I, I, I gotta go. I gotta go. Yeah. I, I felt like I was right there along with you when you were telling him. Mean, it was really good. And, and uh, Class, anything else you'd like to add? No, thank you so much. You were able to do this on kind of short notice, and this was great. A story that kept escalating from start to finish Mm -hmm. yeah man i'm I'm glad i like i said i'm glad i got to talk about it again because i really it's probably been 20 years since we've even even talked about it Mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's it's a it's a subject that doesn't necessarily come up naturally do you know what i mean yeah i mean like right unless someone else brings up an experience first you're not really going to talk about it you know Mm -hmm. exactly cool all right. Well, thanks again, Rich. Um, Thank you. Thank you. This is the Stockberry Dark. We are going to be signing off. We will be back on schedule um, with bi-weekly episodes starting now. Um, thanks so much, Klaus. Another great episode. Um, we will see you guys soon, and uh, please tune in.
Thank you.